Hey guys, welcome back to part two of our tutorial where we'll be focused more on the coding aspect of the bot application for Discord. So if you haven't watched the first tutorial, I suggest you click this link right over here and that will show you how to set up your Discord bot on the developer portal. Now to begin our coding process, we need to go over what frameworks we're gonna be using. In this case, we're just gonna be using the BotKit framework. If you're not familiar with the BotKit framework, let me pop that boy out of here. The BotKit framework, here it is. The BotKit framework is, <clears throat> let me read this from the summary. Bucket is the leading developer tool for building chatbots, apps, and custom integrations for major messaging platforms. So essentially, it's a framework that allows you to create logic, and that logic can be divvied up to multiple platforms. It supports Messenger, Workplace, uh, Slack, Teams, WebEx, uh, WebEx Teams, uh, Twilio, and SMS as well. Now, the great thing about BotKit is that it's very extensible that you can create your own platform connectors, so it doesn't directly support Discord out of the box. But I spent some time to create a Discord connector, which will work with BotKit. And that will essentially allow you to create bots with the same amount of functionality and the same logic you would normally use in your other bots and be able to use it on Discord. Um, I suggest taking some time to look at it. It's not fully complete yet. I haven't finished all the final touches and documentation, but this tutorial will go over the basics on how to just get started with directly messaging a person back and forth. There are some events that are very particular to um, BotKit, and in this case, it also is supported in the conne connector that I wrote as well. And that is a direct message where the user is directly messaging the bot, a direct mention, and a mention. So those are pretty much where the direct mention is the bot being tagged initially in the beginning of the string, and then mentions are being tagged somewhere along the string where it's just a person randomly referencing the bot itself. Um, this uh, bucket is generally very easy to use. Uh, the main thing you would generally be using, especially when you're first starting out with chatbots, is going to be using the hears method. As there's this concept that you know a chatbot can has ears and it can hear things, and you're just matching along a regex pattern or a set of keywords that allows you to create a handler based on the type of events that you want to act against. So in these in this case, in the example here, you can see that we're just responding to direct messages or direct mentions. Um, generally, for our magic eight ball, all we're going to be doing is responding to just messages and mentions, and we're gonna to respond to all so sorts of messages without worrying about what type of messages we're receiving. There will be probably another tutorial where I'll talk about how you can create a middleware to integrate with wit.ai using botkit and how to train a wit.ai uh, model so that you can understand and understand the intents behind each individual message that your bot might get and how to respond to those events. If that's something you're really interested in and that's more like an advanced tutorial, just put a comment. But let's get go ahead and get started with the very basic fundamental Magic 8 Ball bot. Okay, so let's go to the terminal. We're gonna create a directory, of course. We're gonna call it Discord Magic 8. Um, we're gonna CD into that directory as well. So I'm gonna initialize this in Git as well as create an NPM package for that. Actually, it's not really necessary. For an npm package but i'm going to put it on git because i will put this repository or the source code for this tutorial on git so you can reference it for yourself now actually we're just going to touch an index file so we're going to create an index file because we that's going to be our entry point for where we're going to start coding we also want to install the connector the connector works without it already has botkit baked into it as well as a discord io framework so you don't really need to download those independently so that will just work out of the box we just install it like such through npm it might take a little bit of time um if you haven't seen my sweater it says meowy Catmus. so that's just to buy some time while npm finishes so we're gonna open our favorite text editor here. Um, great, let me actually close out of this, sorry. All right, perfect. So we have a plain index.js file. The first thing we wanna do is we want to import our botkit connector, our discord connector. So we're gonna call it botkit, we're not gonna call it, we're just gonna reference the package. And then we want to get our configuration token. That token is going to authenticate with the server and allow us to send messages to the users that we are sending our messages to. 
So to do that, we go to the developers portal for Discord and we go to the bot tab of your application. You're gonna copy the token here. Now for whatever reason, if your token gets leaked, you can always regenerate your token. Um, so if you accidentally commit your code to GitHub accidentally open source and it's like openly available in the public, just regenerate your token and you'll be fine. Um, the most ideal way to do this is if you use a package like .env or some package to read env files and that will allow you to pretty much put your env files um, locally so that way it doesn't get uploaded to Git and then you can just edit it based on the server environments and whatnot. So um, in this case, we're just gonna hard bake it uh, or hard code it. I don't know why I call it bake it. I'm thinking about cookies too much, but that will do. And once we have that, we can use the bot kit connector and we can create an instance of the bot. So let's get discord bot and we pass in the configuration. And what we'll do, what that will do is the, the library or the module, the connector will instantiate a bot kit controller and it'll return you the controller, but it'll also uh, initiate the bot and have it running for you. So we'll take the bot and we can test this to make sure it actually works now by just responding to hello messages. And so we use the here method, the here's method, and we're gonna say direct mention. So that means it will, you'll have to message it directly in a chat room or in a channel. Um, so this is your event handler. It takes two parameters, the bot itself, the bot instance, and the message. So, so let's just say bot.reply, we'll respond to hello world. Actually, oops, you gotta put in the message first. And great, so we're gonna test that. We're gonna go over to our terminal here. Say node index.js. And it should say login. Perfect, so it's logged in here. We'll go to our chat room to verify that this is working. So remember that we have to message it. So we'll say hello, and if it matches it, oh, perfect. So we know that the bot is working. There isn't any particular errors, and now we can start working on creating our magic eight ball code. So. I took the liberty to find some magic eight ball statements, but it looks like I lost it. So let's see, magic eight ball statements. I don't think I have it here. Uh, uh, here it is. I found it here earlier. So we're gonna grab these strings of magic eight ball statements. We're gonna put it in a response string. I initially did this and messed up by putting it on top and it created a static response. That was pretty bad. So this is gonna be our set of responses that our bot can reply to. Now, if you're not familiar with some really cool shortcuts, uh, Command D will allow you to place your cursor in instances or occurrences of what you've highlighted. So it looks like we have that right there. So what we can do is we can put this in a string, boom, and boom, like such. <clears throat> and one more up top. Perfect, and oops, yeah, I would probably want to do this as well. There we go, awesome. And this looks like it's actually supposed to be, actually, I think this is just one response like such, or no, I think it's like that, yeah. Okay, so signs point to yes. Yep, so these are all the responses that our magic eight ball can say. Now what we'll want to do is we will want to shuffle and index to pretty much randomly just select a, a magic eight ball response. So, so random index, uh, we'll do math.floor and math.random, oops, random, uh, crap, math.random and we'll multiply it by the response dot length. And what that does is this is a, uh, integer, uh, integer below one and it will be, or a float, I guess, below one. So it can be like 0.5 and it will multiply it by the response length. In this case, that would be, I think there's like 10 years so that would give you a five index. And then that would just be like whatever the fifth index would be. Um, pretty standard. It's not truly random. There's some packages that will give you a truly random response, but we're not too concerned about that in this case. Um, so now what we'll do is we just take the responses and we pass in a random index and that should work. Oh, actually, I almost forgot. We want to respond to not just hellos, but we want to respond to all messages that are being received to the bot or direct messages, direct mentions. We can also allow the bot to respond to direct messages by just passing in the string here. Uh, I'm not sure if it's space sensitive or not. Um, so this string, passing this event on top of the string, that will work. You can also do it in an array, it takes an array 
um, if you put these in strings. Either way works. Um, I don't think there's really a particular standard in terms of that, but that's just a way to do it. Um, so to be able to wildcard all responses, we just literally put in a, a, a element and then put the wildcard. And that should do it. So we'll have to refresh our bot on the terminal here. There's no errors, so that's great. We're gonna go back and we're gonna test it. So magic eight ball, was this tutorial good? Please. Oh no, it's not working. Oh, we got an error here. Great. Um, okay, so it, I do see where my issue is. It kind of took me a while to figure that out. It wasn't really calling <laughs> the random method. Now that we have that completely set here, we should be able to get this to work now. Oh my goodness, I feel so dumb, but that's just what happens. I was like, not a number, what are you talking about? But so essentially I was multiplying a, a function with a response and I don't, but yeah, it just did not work. Just kept throwing not a number error. So, um, but now we should have a response here. So if we test this here, um, let's see, look at all these messages. Well, am I dumb? That's really the question that should be asked. Oh my God, it says yes. Was this tutorial good? <laughs> okay, well, that's just what happens. I, I can't believe there's two yeses, one lowercase and one uppercase, so that's odd. But anyways, so there we go. That's how we create a Discord bot. Hope you guys like that tutorial. Those are really neat. And if you have any comments, questions, and concerns, please let me know. Uh, maybe I'll post a video on how to deploy a bot or how to troubleshoot or something. Just let me know what kind of suggestions you're looking for and I'll be more than happy to help. Thank you and have a great Christmas guys. Bye.